I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and appreciate you joining with us. And today I'm really pleased to introduce to you Adam Clark from Phoenix, Arizona. Up, nice. here, up here out of the heat yeah, today. Yeah, it's nice to be here. <laughs> nice to nice have to you. Nice to be here with you. And Adam and I met, gosh, when we were very first starting Ex-Mormon Files some years ago, we had lunch, my wife, Carla, and I were, had lunch with you, and, and we got introduced, and we have just taken us this long to get together. So thanks for coming up and sharing your story with us. Oh, thanks for having were you, me. Were you originally from Arizona? No, I grew, I grew up as an Army brat. My father's in the Army, so oh, really? three main places I grew up was uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, Germany and Arizona, two times each places, each place. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Fort Lewis, I was up there for basic training, and then I went to Germany and on, on assignment, so in the military, that's interesting. Oh, that seems to be the path then, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, except Arizona. I ended up in Utah. So, were your family always Mormon? Were your parents active, or were they? My mom uh, converted when she was in college. Oh, really? And my dad was never... Uh, Mormon. I think he may have gotten yeah. baptized after I did when I was eight. Oh. Um, but uh, I had great parents. My parents are awesome. Uh, they supported me. Anything oh, positive that I wanted to do, yeah. you know, they always supported me. Brothers and sisters? And I got, have? yeah, one older brother, one older sister. Oh, but very yeah. supportive. and Yes. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So... You just kind of had, did you go to church, uh, I guess, uh, LDS church then when you were young? Yeah, we went uh, every week and uh, it was it was, it was was a good learning experience for me. It was, the thing that I take away most from it is that I got to hear at least about Jesus a little bit. Like, uh, you know, like there is a Jesus and I've always, because of that, I think I've always believed in him. Really? And Jesus just from hearing about it as a kid. You know, mom, from your mom or dad? Or? From parents and, and in, the, in the Mormon church, you know, even though it's a different Jesus, it's, you still get, you don't Jesus. really know that at that time. You right. just think Jesus, you know. Yeah. So. Well, did you uh, uh, take seminary? I mean, did you ever go to, like to seminary and stuff? I did in high school for just a couple of years. It's um, always hard when you're moving around, I guess. But. Yeah, I went to the same high school all four years, so that made it oh, a little you? easier. Uh, and where was that? That was in uh, Fort Huachuca, Sierra Vista, Arizona. Oh yeah, Fort Huachuca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, so you, you took seminary, then you say? And yeah, I took seminary for a couple of years in high school. Not the whole time. I was in yeah. early morning marching band. Oh. Uh, so marching band was zero and first hour. For those of you that might recognize this, Vic Firth, you're a you're a drummer by profession, right? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes probably. But um, So you knew that Jesus was important, I guess, but did you also, you probably studied the Book of Mormon and heard about Joseph Smith and all that. Did you have a testimony of them at all? Did I you ever bear your testimony as a young man? I never bore my testimony. Um, I never had a testimony in the church. And a, a lot of it, I think, had to do with I was, I was a real Jack Mormon. 
Like oh, I didn't, yeah. uh, I was running around, you know, doing all the doing your own crazy thing, huh? stuff. Yeah. Was your mom happy about that? Yeah. Or? No, but I wasn't that bad, but, um, you know, it, just, well, a, just a church. rambunctious you went to kid. On I went to then, church on Sunday. And then did stuff on the rest of the week or something. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Well, you actually, you, you became an Eagle Scout, I understand. I did. My dad wanted me to become an Eagle Scout. And I had I had great experiences in the Boy Scouts. I mean, I loved going camping. Yeah. And I loved uh, learning about different things. And then I, I was slacking off, you know, you know, 13, 14 years old really started slacking off and then you know as my 18th birthday was approaching my dad's like oh about that eagle scout you know and my dad gave me a lot of help with it and basically you know arranged the thing and then i just showed up (laughs) (laughs) well it probably happens more often than we'd like to admit in the and the boy scout eagle circles but uh, Mm. so you get out of high school what uh, happens for you i got out of high school uh, my dad asked me, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to do music because I'd already been doing music for years at that point. At high school? In high school, and, in high school in high school. and junior high school and lots of different bands. And I played in a, a symphony. And, um, wow. Uh, and then so I just I, I started going to college for music. And that's what I wanted to do. So yeah. I just off to the races Yeah. after that. Now, where did you play? What kind of venues did you uh, just all kinds of stuff, festivals and, you know, bars, uh, <laughs> um, country clubs. Wow. Um, I've done a couple tours in, you know, different countries and all around the United States. Well, and it's I've learned a lot from it. Yeah. Well. Mm. Did you, I know you done worship services and so on. Did mm-hmm. you do that early on or does that come later? That came around the time I was about 21. I started playing in churches every Sunday and different churches, like two to three services in different churches every Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, and it was a huge blessing, huge blessing to me. Yeah, because I got to hear the word, um, you know, every Sunday multiple times. And even though, you know, I wasn't paying attention sometimes, it was still... I was still hearing it. Three times a, a week or a day, that would be. Yeah. Did you sense that yeah. the message was different than what you'd learn, been learning in Mormonism? Not at first because I really wasn't paying attention too much. I was just like, you know, all about myself. And I, yeah. I was just all about, I want to be a jazz musician. And, yeah. you know, that's all I cared about. And I was living like the musician lifestyle, the yeah. uh, typical, you know. Yeah. musician lifestyle and stuff and so but after a couple of years and i've been doing that working in churches since i was 21 and i'm 39 now so after a couple of years i started paying attention really and i was like you know they're they're talking about jesus a lot <laughs> you know like the whole thing is about jesus yeah and so that kind of got me thinking yeah you know and that kind of started a little me wanting to to know more and me paying attention more yeah you Did know. you ever feel, uh, you kind of hinted earlier that maybe you felt a little guilty about how you'd been living your life? Uh, yes, yes. Is I that even from f- mom or just your own feelings? No, my mom never really put that on me. Um, oh, good for her. Yeah, that was me and just, you know, I think it, I think I would have felt that way if I was Mormon or if I was any other religion. I probably would have felt the same way. Just that I wasn't living up to what I yeah, had taught. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so I wanted to make a change, uh, and I, you know, was dragging my feet for a while. And then I was, the only thing of what I thought was the truth was the Mormon church. So I actually started, I walked in to a Mormon church randomly, the one that was in my neighborhood when I was 26 years old. Yeah. And I just started. Did it feel you know, good and feel right? Or? At first it did. I was mm-hmm. like, man, you know, this is really good. Yeah. You know, and, and of course everyone treats you well when you're, right. when you're a new per- person yeah, new in the church. Yeah, everyone say, hey, come, come over to our house on Saturday. We're having a barbecue. And it, it felt really good. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I enjoyed that uh, for a while. And I did, I kind of went six months on, six months off for about three years at that point. Uh, were you traveling some during that time too? I wasn't. I just wouldn't go. Oh. I would 
fall back mentally, you know, <laughs> and physically and every yeah. other way of falling back. Uh, and, you know, I had a guilty conscience and... But kept giving it a try, huh? And I, yeah, I kept, uh, I actually ran into one of my uh, high school friends that I wrestled with in high school. Yeah. Uh, like the first day I went there, I was like, well, you go to this church? He's like, yeah, you live in this neighborhood? Yeah. And we found out we lived like four Close houses down you. from each other. Oh, my goodness. You so, know, so that was, that from was. years really, earlier, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Um, so I just started going, and that's when my journey of getting information and, and seeking um, the truth about Mormonism and the history of it, that's when it started. Okay, what prompted that then? It was just, um, uh, I don't know, this is, this is kind of typical, I guess, I don't know what the LDS will think about this, but I got a computer <laughs> for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was way late in the game getting, getting a computer and like getting on the internet and stuff. It was about like 2007 or something. What do you need a computer for when you've got drums, right? <laughs> yeah, and you didn't really need it before then, but then everybody was moving in that direction and I saw, you know, my business was, was suffering a little bit oh. because of that. Um, so I was like, yeah, I need to be answering people's emails because people were like, hey, I emailed you like a week ago. Yeah. Like, you know, what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I don't do it. I check my brother's computer like once every two <laughs> weeks or something, you know, so I was like, so I got a, I got a computer and I just started going online and I started you know, Searching. Joseph Smith, you know. Just curious, you mean? Yeah. Just, just to see what was there? Yeah, and then I, 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 it's like. Did you know that there was stuff out there, or did you? I really didn't have that much of an idea. Yeah. I really didn't. Sh kind of shocking when you find out what's out there. Yeah, and just like the natural reaction, when I first started reading and listening to pastors speak about it, I listened to a lot of pastors online. Oh. I really like like to do that, like a... My favorites are Miles Monroe, Ravi Zacharias, um, who's that guy? Paul Washer. Yeah. You know, Sean McCraney. Stanley, Charles Stanley. Or? Oh, yeah, I like him, but I haven't, I, I gotta listen to him more. Oh. I don't listen to too much of him. Jer but David Jeremiah's out there. There's a mm, bunch of them. There's so many good ones, yeah. yeah. And there's so much stuff out there so now. So were you hearing again a message that was different than what you'd been raised with Mormonism at this point? or? At that Did point, I still didn't think it was that different. Yeah. I knew it was more about Jesus. And I, you I, sensed that. I liked that. Yeah. And uh, I knew it was more about Jesus. But then when I started looking into the history of the LDS church, I had a reaction. Even though I wasn't really, hadn't been active in the church or anything, and I never really was. Yeah. Um, I was as, as a kid up until 18 years old. I went yeah. to church every Sunday. But right. Like I said, I was Jack Mormon and everything, but between eighteen and twenty-six, you wandered a little there. That definitely, like <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so I started reading this stuff, and you know, uh, you know, journal of discourses, all this stuff. And at first, I had you know the 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 typical reaction of like, whoa, what is all this? This yeah. can't be true. Right. You know, they're speaking bad about about the Mormon Church. And so you're defensive, even. I though was you defensive, even though it wasn't. Yeah, it was it was, it was weird <laughs> like that. Uh, but then after, you know, I kept, and, and it became a, a daily thing for me and be, being an artist, being a musician and not being married, not having any kids. It's like my time, your time is kind of your own. Yeah. So if you, if you don't feel like practicing one day, you can just, I'm going to research Mormonism today instead of practice, you know? So I started doing a lot of that and, um, and I was just like, wow. And then after a couple months, I was like, man, this is. Really started having this questions. This is very interesting. What really struck you the most? A couple of things that struck you. It was. It wasn't one thing. It was just the piling up. Like it wasn't one particular thing. It was just like, wow, this. I keep. It's like an endless pile of of stuff. You know. Well, and that's why I just everything I ran into had a problem or had some crazy thing that new thing that I learned about it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you? Sensed. Yeah, and and one thing that I thought of it, that was a huge blessing for me that's that's different from a lot of active Mormons that have families and that are very devout, um, you know, very good-hearted, good-meaning people. Yeah. For them to find out the truth about Mormonism, it's a, uh, it's it's not good news. Because they're like risking if they want to do anything oh. about it, they're like risking their family. 
uh, their like bishop. Eternal marriage. Eternal marriage. Yeah. Their bishop might be their boss. Yeah. You know, they might lose their job. Um, for me, it was like a celebration. <laughs> it, I was like, yes, this is, it's just Jesus and, and his grace, you know? Uh, for me, it was, it was an advantage instead of a disadvantage. Oh, that's awesome. I so, mean, that really is neat. It you? was, yeah, it was what it, did you? It was I mean, cool. Grace, you mentioned that. What did you understand about Grace as a Mormon? I understood it was always this fuzzy gray area, you mm -hmm. know, and and I knew that there was forgiveness in my life. I knew that that the people in my life had forgiven me of things. I know that Jesus would forgive me. Yeah. But then there was always this gray area of, you know, it's like we forgive you, but. <laughs> but, and then add something else onto it, yeah. you know, but you can't come hang out with us here or you can't do this thing because, you know, we're right. the people who have done this right and you haven't type of thing, you yeah. know, which is like that in a lot of organizations. Yeah, I guess you know? so. Any, any man-made organization is going to have some of that stuff. Yes. But now you found out what grace really means. Yes. And what is that? <laughs> it's it it means that that it's it's all about Jesus and how yeah. he um, it's his work it's his perfect and finished work finished work yeah yeah that saves us and it's not anything that we can add or take away yeah. uh, from that so it's it's all it's all on him it's 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 like when they say give it up to Jesus or or put it all in, in God's hands, you're really putting it all in God's hands, like all the positive and the negative things. It's like, here, take it, you know? Yeah. So wh how old were you when you started doing this internet searching? And I was around, it was about the time where I started going back to the Mormon church, 20, oh, 26, 27 years oh, old. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then you started seeing maybe the and not I was hypocrisy, doing, but the differences and what they're saying and what they actually... The right. Doctrine. And it took me a while, you know, a couple of years to really get a handle on it to yeah. where I could compare what's going on in the meetings with what's actually the doctrine. Yeah. You know, at first I was just like, I was amazed and I was very interested and I was very, and it was to my advantage. Yeah. You know, you so saying. it was like a celebration. I was like, did yeah. You, did you feel a great freedom and the burden being I, lifted oh, off your shoulders? Man, I really did. Yeah. I really did. Were you able to share that with your mom or or have you been able to? Or yeah, we have awkward? a, yeah, it's a little awkward, but we have a good relationship. And, yeah, uh, good. you know, the first couple of years, um, I was like, Hey mom, look at this, you know, uh, yeah. you know, Tried to share you, have mom. you heard this? Have you read this? Like I'm sending her emails and I'm like, look at this, look at this, look Did at this. She wanna know? And you know, she, you know, she would change the subject and she doesn't want to talk about <laughs> those things. And that's understandable, you know, and th I did that for a couple of years. And then the next couple of years, I, well, just from the beginning, I was making all kinds of witnessing mistakes. Yeah. You know, I'm afraid we all do that. A yeah. Bit. I get frustrated yeah. and, yeah. you know, you say something and then, you know, when you hang up the phone, you're like, man, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have me say that? <laughs> yeah. 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 I've done a few of those. <laughs> yeah. So I'm getting older and now I know Wiser. <laughs> what's, yeah, you know, what's effective, what's not, what's appropriate, what's not, you know, and then after about four or five years of going back and forth with me and my mom, we kind of just hit this level ground where, yeah. I don't know, like I can, she's kind of open to it, you know, every once in a while. As long and as I you, just, yeah, yeah if what I don't. Do you, what do you think the Mo Mormons most misunderstand about uh, Christians and what we, what we believe now? You know, it's like this superiority thing and they don't show it. They won't like show it, you know, I had that in my heart even though I never came close to living yeah. anything of the but church the, really. We've got the truth. Mormons think we've got the truth and we've got it, we've got it all. We've got more and. Yeah, and you know, Christians just wanna, they just wanna say it's all grace so they can send it up and <laughs> you know, all that. And They don't really understand that. They, they're trying and they're good people, but they don't understand. Yeah. You know, that's what I, that's what I gather. 
So after you go through this process, do you, do you attend a Christian church or what happens to you? You know, I, I attended the churches that I was uh, playing in the, wor the worship team. Oh, you were playing by then, I guess, okay. Yeah, I had already been playing by then for years. So and you'd I could... go to a Mormon church and then go to these, yeah. play drums? I would the... go to like the college singles service, mm -hmm. which yeah. is like 1 p.m., Oh, okay. Because, you know, college kids, you got to sleep in, sure. you know, even though I was past college age by that point. Yeah. So I would go early morning and play two or three services, <laughs> and then I would go to the Mormon church, and man, by the end of Sunday, man, I was churched out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've had enough for today. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go watch a movie or something. Yeah. So yeah. you kept, but you eventually, I don't know if you get, I guess you quit going to the Mormon church eventually. And yeah, I just kind of stopped showing up. Yeah. You know, and I still talk to some of the people that I made friends with there, but I, you know, as you know, I'm trying to witness to them and then eventually some of them I still talk to, yeah. uh, some of them, the relationships, the friendships kind of faded, faded away. Well, do you feel like you had, I guess some people call it born again moment, uh, something that really brought you to, to Jesus? You know, I haven't really ever had like a moment like some people have. Yeah. Um, more, pro more of a progression. It was more of a progression, yeah. That's where I've been. Yeah. And yeah. maybe there was a moment and I was just, <laughs> I, I missed it, you know. Yes, yeah. But uh, it was just, it was over time and, and you know, I was just lost and, and uh, you know, so... Well, God certainly I didn't know directed who I was. you to those internet sites. Probably did you? The Bible is. Did you have a? Did you ever read the Bible? I guess as a Mormon, and now how are you as a Christian with the Bible? I read it uh, uh, when I was growing up as a Mormon, um, and uh, I would view it from that viewpoint. Sure. You sure. know, and now that I read it, it's, it's so much different. Is it really? You know. For you? Yeah. Uh, the the New Testament is just I just love it. It's just you know, so well, it's all about Jesus and I don't know. It's amazing though, isn't it? I mean, that we have this Bible that we take all the time as Mormons into the church and we carry it, but we really don't know much about it, mm -hmm. and uh, and in some ways we don't even trust it. But it is reliable, and there's mm -hmm. manuscripts and plenty of uh, historical evidence for the for the Bible, and now it means something to you. Yeah, you can go to Israel and and look in the yeah you, you know they the got trip, them all right? laid out yeah yeah the Dead Sea Scrolls and a bunch of bunch of stuff. It has history. It's real history. Now the miracles, you know, for me that takes faith. Sure. You know, and uh, with all the the scientific uh, discoveries that are going on now it doesn't seem too far-fetched for me yeah you know if somebody that created the world and the universe knows how it works <laughs> then it's with especially we live in the 21st century now and there's so many things that we never could have even imagined yeah. you know cell phones and all this so the, it, the you know turning water into wine or or healing the blind it doesn't seem too far-fetched for me now yeah. i think maybe god put me here to Increase my faith, maybe because I'm hard-headed and I wouldn't have <laughs> believed it earlier. <laughs> I don't know. It does help sometimes to have a little uh, faith and so on. But you wanted mm -hmm. to share a few things. I know you've got some notes here. Do you want to take a few minutes and say what you had on your heart there? Yeah, I just want to, um, any LDS that are watching this, uh, I just, for me, it just comes down to Jesus. And I know that a lot of people would say that. It really is all about Jesus and uh, I would just I would ask myself and ask yourself who is Jesus who is Jesus and you gotta you gotta research it and it was like is he you know is he Satan's brother <laughs> or did he create everything including Satan you know is he which Jesus is the right Jesus because the Bible talks about there's going to be different Jesuses. So which one is the right one? You got to have the right one. Is is the Jehovah's Witness Jesus the real Jesus? Is it is Jesus Michael the Arch Archangel? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, is Jesus uh, 
like in Islam, not the savior of the world, but a really, just a really good prophet. A good guy. Huh? A yeah. good guy, you know, is, it was Jesus born of a virgin or was he not born of a virgin as in the LDS uh, doctrine? Is he, was he a polygamist, you know, or was he not a polygamist, you know? Does Jesus' blood cover all sin? Or like in the LDS doctrine, does it not cover all sin? And just like, who just who is Jesus? And that's that's the main uh, question I would I would ask everyone to ask themselves and to ask God. That's excellent. Yeah, I've got a good friend who goes and talks to missionaries, return missionaries, and his message is never about the the bad news. It's always about the good news. And he says, run to the cross. You know, that's where. Uh, and as a Mormon, did you have any regard for the cross at all? I knew about it. I knew, you know, what it was about and its power and, and everything. Died on but the cross. Yeah. yeah, but I never really knew all the the power of the cross. Yeah. That's where Jesus paid for sin. Yeah, on the cross, God turned. God can't be in the presence of sin. He turned his back on Jesus. And it's the only time in Scripture where Jesus calls God my God. God. All the rest of the time, it's Father, Father, yeah. Father. And he was my God. Why have you forsaken me? You know, yeah. It's because God couldn't be there at that time, because at that time, he, he was, was paying for all the sins. Paying for the sins, mm -hmm. and for all the sins. Mm -hmm. And that's the great freedom, isn't it? And to, to, aren't you, don't you feel free of the guilt that you felt before when you were saying, oh, I, I guess I'm not doing enough, and I need to get back to the church and all that. Now mm -hmm. there's a freedom. And yeah, I, had, I was so guilty, man. And I'm so guilty of a lot of things, but I can, it's not going to, hold me back mentally anymore like it used to. There's a freedom in Christ and, uh, yeah. you know. Well, he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. And that's the great gift. Amen. And what a grace. Well, Adam, thanks so much. You're still playing, I guess, for, are you playing for different churches still? Or when you go yes. traveling around, do you get to I offer your services or? <laughs> I don't play in churches when I travel around, but I'm, I'm uh, playing in one in uh, Phoenix right now. So oh, yeah. it's a huge blessing. Yeah, we'll have to make mm -hmm. the next time we get down there to see our kids. We'll have to look you up and. Oh, and please do! Going. Yeah, let's yeah. hang out. Is it in Phoenix or Gilbert? Where is it at? It's uh kind of way east, east uh, Phoenix. Oh. Like past Mesa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Apollo Jun. What's the name of that? Apache Junction. Apache. Is it out yeah. that way? Yeah, it's way out there. Oh wow. But Sundays is no traffic, so you just cruise. Not where Renaissance there. is or yeah. something. <laughs> well, Adam, thanks so much for sharing. Great testimony of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's really what the message is all about, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.